<laughs> oh man. Now I know not a lot of you guys are gonna believe me when I say this, but I promise just a few years ago I was like the shyest, most quiet kid that you'd ever have met. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tell my most embarrassing secrets to the internet, uh, so it's funny how life works sometimes. Okay, let's take it from the top. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you guys are having a great day so far. My name's Gianluca and I'm a first year Canadian medical student. Now normally I'll get a new video out on the channel about once per week, but every now and then I get one of these questions either in my comment section or on my Instagram page, and I feel like it'd just be a great opportunity for me to try and answer them, because they might be able to help some people out. Now that's gonna go ahead and bring us to the topic of today's video, because very recently I was actually asked by a few different students, uh, regarding the question of whether or not you could go to medical school if you're scared of blood or needles or you're just a little bit squeamish when it comes to this type of stuff. So I thought I'd go ahead and give my most embarrassing story as a medical student uh, to some of you that might be in a similar situation and then I'll offer a little bit of advice at the end for those of you that might need it. So what we need to do first, kind of go back in time about a year from now uh, to when I was first accepted into medical school. This is about a year ago from this date right now. And when you first get accepted into medical school, for those of you that don't know, one of the very first things that you need to do is run through all the paperwork. You have to get your police check-in, you have to get your immunization records, and you also have to get a few blood tests in order to determine whether or not you're actually immune to the things that you were vaccinated for back when you were a kid. So personally, I've never really been a fan of blood tests per se, but I did develop a strategy over time for those of you that are interested. What I would do is every time I'd have to go in, I'd lie down, flat on the bed, hold out my arm, and I'd kind of look the other way, just kind of squint and bear it, and everything would be fine. I even went and donated blood back in the 12th grade, but once again, I just kind of lied down and looked the other way for about seven minutes while they kept taking it. But once I learned that I had been accepted into medical school, I thought to myself, this could no longer be the case because I thought that in a few short months, I was going to be doing these myself. So anyways, there I was towards the end of June of last year, I had made uh, an appointment with my doctor, my family doctor, who I had known for a very long time. Just a brief note about my family doctor, by the way, he was no ordinary family doctor. This was an individual who had been on multiple TV appearances every now and then we'd see him on the nightly news as we were watching TV from the table. And it was definitely someone that I looked up to a lot. I remember there was a few occasions within the few years before I actually got accepted where I told this person that in a few years I was going to be in medical school. So that day when I was going to the doctor, I was really going for two reasons. I mean, first I was going uh, to see whether or not I was actually immune to Hep B, but that was more of a secondary reason. I just really wanted to go and kind of celebrate with my family doctor and show him that I had made it into medical school. There was just a little hiccup though. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I actually used to work as a lifeguard and a swim instructor, uh, which means that I actually got really, really sick about twice per year. That's once in the summertime and once in the wintertime. And oftentimes I could trace it back to the exact kid that had actually gotten me sick. We'd go and do our cute little uh, blowing bubbles exercise and we'd come back up and the kid would sneeze in my face and I knew right away that I was about to get really sick. So for about a week before my actual doctor visit, I had the mother of all man colds, right? I was in bed uh, pretty much all day for a week and I was just really feeling sore. I wasn't drinking a lot of water, wasn't eating a lot of food, but I didn't think a lot of it at the time. Uh, so I just got in my car and I went off to the doctors that morning. So now I'm at the doctor's appointment, I meet my family doctor, he says hi, it gives me a high five, says congratulations, all that stuff. It was a good moment for a little bit. Uh, and then we got down to business. He said, okay, go ahead and follow the nurse. They're going to go ahead and do your blood test. And then you can come back to my office and we'll talk very quickly. I had actually known the nurse too. I'd been to this clinic, like I said, for, for many years. So we go to the back room and she asked me if I want to lie down. I, I said, no. I said, uh, for today, I think I'm going to go ahead and sit up. She goes, okay. Uh, so she gets everything ready and we're talking. And then she goes and it's time to set everything up. And normally I would look away, but again, because I really wanted to get the feel for what this was like, I was super curious and I wanted to know exactly how this was done, how the needle went in, kind of where it fits and the procedure that's involved. So I put it in my head that I was going to be staring and kind of following the needle on myself for the entire time. Now, I don't know if you guys can tell on the camera, but I'm actually a fairly thick uh, veined individual. I have some, some good uh, nice thick veins on my arm. So normally it's not much of an issue for people to go ahead and draw blood on me. But on that particular day, I don't know if it was just because I was a little bit dehydrated or for what reason, but she couldn't go ahead and find a decent vein. So there was a lot of tapping on my arm, I remember, and then they had the tourniquet out, uh, or she had the tourniquet out trying to get a nice vein to stand up to the top. And finally she went ahead and found one. But just all the touching, I already didn't kind of like that. I was already in the wrong mindset for it. Okay, so now she's found the vein. It's all good, it's up at the top. And she's going in with the needle nice and slowly. I remember her puncturing it going inside and then slowly I could feel just kind of like this weakness coming over me like I was getting tired and then the vision from the side started getting darker and darker and I kept trying to fight it because I knew what was going on but I wanted to keep watching I remember the last thing that happened I just went oh no and I went to sleep. 
Now, for those of you that have ever had an experience like this or you're wondering what was going on, basically I'm going to go ahead and just simplify very quickly. This is known as a vasovagal syncopial reflex, where what happens is um, your body realizes that or it thinks that it's in a situation where it's losing a lot of blood. And in order to go ahead and prevent it from losing blood, it does some things to kind of cope and prevent you from losing blood. So some of those things are that your heart rate slows down, your veins kind of vasodilate so the blood stops flowing to uh, throughout your circulation so it doesn't actually go to your brain. Um, and then a lot of times as a result you end up passing out now remember I was sitting up when you pass out and you're lying down on the floor your body is now in a different plane so you don't have the gravity pushing down on you and the blood flows a lot more easily and then eventually you wake back up and that was exactly what happened to me eventually I woke back up and I had the nurse and the doctor there looking back at me and they had given me uh, a cup full of some like sugary orange drink to drink and feel better and I realized I put two and two together and, and I found out that I had actually passed out um, on my first blood test basically as a medical student right in front of the doctor that I really wanted to show off that I had now gotten into medical school. Now I hope a lot of you guys can go ahead and actually understand just how embarrassing this was for me at the time but I thought I'd go ahead and share it here today uh, just letting some other people know that if this does happen to you you're not the only one that it's ever actually happened to. So back to the original question of can you be in medical school if you are the type of person that's ever passed out at the sight of blood or if you're just a little bit squeamish I guess the answer by default is yes because not only am I here but I'm not leaving anytime soon and it's actually really funny how things worked out because the results of my blood test showed that I actually wasn't immune to hep B and as a result I had to take a few more vaccinations over the course of the year and I had to go for at least another five to six blood tests um, which gave me lots of time to improve my tolerance of it. So my advice to everyone if this is you and you want to go ahead and increase your tolerance when it comes to these types of things you still want to pursue medicine I would say you could 100% still do medicine and one of the things that I did if any of you have seen my cars videos in the past I kind of used that thing and actually I used the concept of progressive overload a lot in my life but what I did was I started off slow the very next time I went for a blood test first of all before then I'd actually gone on the internet uh, and I started doing things like looking up pictures looking up videos of how things are done seeing the anatomy uh, seeing tutorials on how the phlebotomy is actually taught and really understanding the science behind it then I would gradually build it up start off with blood tests and then you look up different videos YouTube is really great for all these gross videos if you really want to see them and you gradually and slowly build up your tolerance to these types of things. Next time I had to go in and give blood, I tried lying down and looking at it because like this, at least there was less gravity pushing down against the circulation. Um, and then the next time after that, I sat up and I looked away. And then the next time after that, I sat up and I looked uh, and it was actually fine by that time. But by that time, I'd done a lot of other stuff or seen a lot of other stuff here in medical school. So I had no difficulties with it at all. And I think that's like a really central concept of medical school in general. Absolutely no one expects you to show up here for your very first time and do everything right on the very first time, know how to do everything, be the best in every single situation. We're all coming from a whole bunch of different backgrounds and it's totally okay if in the very beginning uh, you might not have the skills or the tolerance of all these different things. But what's not okay is that you go ahead and give up. Once you realize that there's an issue that you need to work on, go ahead and structure a plan. You start off slow, you build yourself up, and eventually you get over almost any obstacle that you could think of. And that's like a very central philosophy to me personally. There's never, I can't do something. It's, I can't do something yet, but I can go ahead and structure a plan and get there eventually if that's something that I want to do and I hope you guys go ahead and take that and implement it in your own lives. What was super interesting to me though is that first of all this is actually a very common thing uh, and people have different triggers. When I spoke to some of the other students in my class people told me that they've had similar experiences and then when I actually went on to the surgical unit and spoke with some of the surgeons some of the nurses there's lots of stories of students actually passing out in the middle of surgery or surgeons passing out in the middle of surgery because in addition to a lot of the sights that you see in surgery there's also a lot of smells that people don't tell you about and those could be just as triggering um, as, as some of the sites in medicine. And I mean what I still don't understand is that I am totally fine in the anatomy lab. We've done cadaver dissections, seeing the different specimens, holding them. I went into the surgery ward and I was briefed by some of the surgeons there that this is the spot in the surgery room where you know if the med student starts feeling a little bit dizzy you go there because we don't want you falling on top of the patient. And I remember when they asked me like have you ever been queasy in terms of medical things before? Just cut kind of played my pool, I was like, no, <laughs> never, totally good with this stuff. But the whole time, I was very aware of myself, but being in there, it was just so interesting. I didn't have even the slightest inclination to, to even remember what it was like to pass out. But yeah, that's pretty much all that I gotta say. Once you guys get to medical school or medicine, or maybe you're there now already, you're gonna see that there's gonna be a lot of different experiences that you're having for the first time. Some are gonna be easier for you to handle, some of you are gonna be a little bit more different. Everyone's gonna be different in their baseline threshold, but everyone can go ahead and make improvements, especially over time, if you wanna do something 
bad enough. I have a ton of other stories. First time I went to the emergency room, someone had a finger that was more or less just dangling off and gushing blood, and I was like the first one to come into contact with it before I called the doctor. Just it was a whole bunch of different stories that I could go ahead and say, but I'm gonna cut it off there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video for today. If you did, go ahead and smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and leave me a comment in the comment section below if you have any more questions, if you wanna hear any more of my stories. I have a lot of them, <laughs> and I love telling them, so let me know what you want to see in the future. Other than that, guys, we'll see you on Sunday. Everyone take it easy.